My blush is insane today, or is it because I'm hot? I don't know. Hey, Slow Nation, welcome back to another DIY Friday. I hope you guys had a really fun Thanksgiving. I'm sure y'all probably went out and did like a whole Black Friday thing. I don't necessarily need to go and buy anything, you know? So this year, it's just gonna be one of those years where I probably just not get anything. So if you guys watched my last video, in that video, I did mention that I'm hosting my first Friendsgiving and baby shower this coming Sunday. I wanted to go out and buy Myler balloons to spell out baby group name but the thing is like they were $25 a pop and I just thought once I'm done with these balloons I'm never gonna use them again for anything so I thought that you know what maybe I can use some of my creative juices and tinker with some stuff that I already have and then just go from there and so that's what I decided to do is to make these little name boxes so this is the letter A I know a lot of you guys are super duper curious about baby Groot's name but we've decided as a family to not really share her name publicly on the internet I'll make a whole video as to why later on because it is is a very long explanation but you know the internet is kind of like scary sometimes and so I just you know want to keep baby Groot safe just for a little bit it's basically two inch deep it's made completely out of cardboard boxes all the filling is made with Dollar Tree items and I decided to add in some of the little roses that Papa Bear got for me in September for our anniversary I just kept it in the vase so that it would dry out on its own and then I stuck it inside of this so it's kind of like a good incorporation of like our love and then our love for her as well Maybe I'll have this kind of like propped up on the table where we're having all of our food and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and grab our boxes and box cutters and let's get started on this. Okay, to start out, you're going to need a printout letter and I actually have a link of all the letters down below for you guys so you guys can just easily print them off. Next, with a glue stick, go ahead and just apply some glue onto the letter and press it onto your cardboard box. Now using a box cutter or an X-Acto knife, I think a box cutter works a lot better. I'm just going to go ahead and cut out the letter. And this is what it should look like. Now I'm just going to work on the cardboard side. Okay, next with another piece of cardboard, go ahead and cut out a bunch of strips that are 2 inches wide. For this, I think it's best to work on the largest sides of the letters and so I'm going to go ahead and measure out one side of the letter A. I make a nice little mark onto that cardboard and then I cut out two of them since there's two sides to the letter A. So I'm going to add a nice strip of glue to that piece and then I just press it against the letter A. Go ahead and add a nice long strip of glue in the inside as well just to make sure that it's double secured. Now go ahead and repeat that on the other side of the letter A. Now for the rest of the letter, you can go ahead and just keep cutting out little pieces from the 2 inch wide strips that you had cut out earlier. And make sure that some pieces will need more than just one side glued on. So for this one, for example, there's three sides that needed glue applied to it. You're obviously just going to attach it and then you always want to fill in the inside with more glue just to make sure that it really sticks. Another quick note, some parts of a letter is going to be a little bit more tedious than others. For example, the bottom of this letter A, there's going to be five pieces that goes into building the bottom part of it and three of those five pieces are actually quite small. So you just got to be patient with it and also stay really organized so you know which pieces go where. And for smaller tedious spaces like this right here, you definitely want to glob on the glue just to make sure that it really stays. Now it's time to cover up the letter. You can obviously paint it, but I am going to use some ribbons to cover it up. And this one is about two and a half inches wide. So this part is pretty simple. You just got to add glue to the side of your box and then you attach the ribbon to it. Make sure you press it down really nicely. Also, you want to make sure that one edge of the ribbon is going to be aligned to the back side of the letter. And you want to continue to add glue to the letter and working only one side at a time. This way, you can really smooth out the ribbon and make sure that it's nice and flat. Also, when I first started wrapping the ribbon, I did have like about an inch overhang. I'm just going to go ahead and glue that down to the one side. 
Then I'm just going to finish up wrapping up that last side and once I reach the starting point again, I'm going to cut off the ribbon leaving about half an inch overhang. And then taking that little excess overhang, I'm going to just fold it in so that it matches along the edge of the letter and I glue it down. Okay, so now that the whole thing is wrapped up, you're going to notice that the opening of the letter has a little bit of the ribbon kind of just hanging off. What you're going to do is you're going to go through every single corner and make a snip towards the cardboard. And what you're going to do is you are going to add glue to the edge of the cardboard and you're just going to fold in the excess ribbon. And by snipping off the corners, this will give you enough lax so that you can actually fold in the ribbon nicely without having any weird like buckles and stuff. And also by doing this, it really gives it a nice professional finished look and it covers up the corrugated part of the cardboard. Now all you have to do is repeat this onto the other sides of the letter and then you're pretty much done assembling the letter. Okay, on to the fun part, which is the decorating part. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to really be liberal with the glue gun here. I'm just going to fill the bottom part of it with some glue. Okay, then I just ball up some tissue paper. You can use newspaper or any leftover paper that you have. Just go ahead and press it against the glue. This way, it will be a cushion and act as a filler for when you start decorating the letter. And then at this point, it's totally optional to you, but I'm using a bunch of berries and holly flowers from the dollar store. And then I just place them all over. I add a bunch of glue and I just glue it straight to the tissue paper. Here's something really special that I wanted to add to the letter. These are just flowers from our anniversary this year and I allowed them to dry. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it smaller by taking off some of the petals. Then I just add glue to it and I place it into the letter as well. By the way, here's a fun fact. Yellow is my favorite color. That's the reason why he always buy me yellow roses. And I think it does add a nice little touch to the letter. But because I'm extra, I obviously need fairy lights for all of my decor. So I'm just going to go ahead and just weave the fairy lights into the letter here. And I just go all the way around making sure that the bulbs are peeking through. Once I've made my fairy light rounds, I'm going to just flip it over to the back and I'm going to glue the battery pack to the back. And I'm going to add a little bit more glue just to keep some of the wiring in place. And ta-da! Here is your totally homemade monogrammed letter decor. And I think it's actually really super sweet if you want to make these for gifts. Also, if you want to make the pumpkin unicorn, you can also check out my other Dollar Tree DIY. But I think these turned out really cute, right? Okay, you guys, what do you guys think of the DIY? Didn't they turn out so, so, so pretty? If you guys haven't seen the other DIY where I bought these $1 pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and I turned it into, for example, the unicorn, I think it's so cute with the unicorn with it. So I think maybe I'll keep the unicorn so that she can also have it when she grows up as well. This isn't bad for a couple of bucks, right, you guys? I mean, it does take a little bit of arm grease. And I think it makes great gifts as well. Enough of my jibber jabber. Um, I hope you guys like the DIY. I really, really love the way this turned out. There's a couple more letters just sitting right there and it's just looks really really adorable and I'm happy about it I can't wait to display it for my baby shower and uh, again if you guys like this video be sure to like it down below share it with everyone that you know and if you're gonna try this out please shoot me a photo with the hashtag hey KL or S L O A B N so then I can take a look at your work because it really makes me happy to see you taking my DIYs and running with it I mean you can decorate it however you want it doesn't necessarily have to look like this so the possibilities are really Endless. Yeah, I would love to just take a look at it and see what you guys come up with. If you guys want to support me and Baby Group, you obviously can hit that subscribe button. I know YouTube sometimes isn't telling people that I'm uploading, so you can also hit that notification bell and it'll tell you, hey, KL just uploaded. I also totally understand that notifications can be very annoying. So if you don't want to hear the notification every now and then, um, just come back every Wednesdays and Fridays. I'm here every Wednesdays and Fridays until I deliver. <laughs> I have three weeks left. Hopefully she stays in here for three weeks weeks hopefully I can get some things planned ahead of time so that I can continue to upload even after I deliver her but you know I'm, I'm here for a couple more weeks so come by every single Wednesdays and Fridays and you're totally welcome anyways you guys you know how to end my videos remember to always rock on celebrities bye
Can you guys believe this? It's been forever since I've done a makeup tutorial and since I'm hosting my first Friendsgiving slash baby shower, I thought I'd share with you guys what I would be wearing on my face for the event. All right, here's my pregnant, no makeup, glorious face. So I'm starting out with hydrating my skin and I like to use rosehip oil on my skin because it's really great for those with acne, hyperpigmentation, and it helps hydrate my skin as well. Especially since pregnancy, my skin has been really dry lately and this really helps with it. To really combat the acne, I like to just do one drop of tea tree oil on my face and usually you should mix it with another oil and since I already have the rosehip oil on, I can just layer it. I am still a huge advocate of sunscreen and I've been using this particular one since 2011. This one though is a little bit on the tinted side so when I do decide to go makeup free, um, these are the only three things that I slather on my face. I don't typically wear eyeshadow primer but when I am going to an event or if I'm hosting one, I like to make sure that my eyes doesn't crease. And I just apply this all the way up to the brow bone and a little bit underneath my lower lash line as well. Moving on to brows, I am going to use the Brow Zing from Benefit. And then I just use like a cheap e.l.f. angled brush and I just shape my brows with it. A couple months ago, NARS sent me their eyeshadow palette from their holiday collection for this year, which I'm really excited about and I've been using it quite often. And I apply some of the darker shade underneath my lower lash line, just on the outer third. And then whatever residual that's left on the brush, I just drag it to the inner corner of my eyes to fade it out a little bit. And then I use that same color to kind of cut crease my eyes because, you know, eyes are super Asian. And I use a nice fluffy brush to just blend it out. Okay, so now onto the lighter shade, which is this really pretty sparkly gold. I use a nice fluffy brush to apply it onto the brow bone. Then I hit some of that color onto my lid as well, so that it really opens up my eyes. Ooh, and to really make my eyes pop, I'm gonna throw some of that into the inner corner of my eyes as well. Honestly, it is not a holiday makeup if you don't have any falsies on, so I'm just gonna tack some of these babies onto my eyes. Once I'm done with the falsies, I'm just gonna fuse the falsies and my real lashes together with some mascara, and I also apply some of it on my lower lashes as well. For eyeliner, I'm using the Maybelline Master Precise Eyeliner, which I really love. Anything that's felt tip is amazing for me. Really helps, gives me that really big wing that I love wearing every single day. Once the eye makeup is done, I think the oil has really penetrated into my face. So now it's time for foundation. I totally love the fact that I'm using a Dollar Elf brush <laughs> with Studio Fix Fluid from MAC. Honestly, you guys, like I haven't found another foundation that matches my skin color and also wears as well as the Studio Fix Fluid. Once I started wearing the Studio Fix Fluid, I think that was like back in 2014 and I just always come back to it. It just looks so amazing. I normally skip this step on the day-to-day -day wear, but if it's an event, I like to blot my face a little bit with some tissue paper before I move on to the next step. Since it's going to be kind of like a baby shower, I would want some pictures, so I'm going to contour my face and I'm just using the Wet n Wild Dual Contour and Highlighter Stick. Probably like one of the best things that you can buy at the drugstore. And using the same cheap e.l.f. foundation brush, I also use that to just blend out my contour. I normally don't contour the hollow of my cheeks, but again, because it's for pictures and stuff, I kind of want to shape my little pregnant face a little bit. I think I'm starting to look a little bloated. I don't know. Do you guys think so? Or is it just me? Moving on to blush, I'm using the NYX HD blush in Electro. It's super intense, so you got to be very light-handed with it. I like to dab a little bit of it on my nose. It gives it a little cute factor. I know it annoys some people, but I like it, so yeah. And then also, I rub some of it onto my cheeks, of course. Okay, the next best drugstore item would have to be this Illuminating Palette by Wet n Wild. And it's an amazing, really beautiful highlighter palette. And uh, I just add that onto my cheeks. I actually go over the NYX Electro and I think it softens up the blush a little bit. Then I also rub some of that stuff onto my finger. I run it down the bridge of my nose and then the tip of my nose as well. Wait, is highlighting the tip of your nose still a thing or is that like me being stuck in 2015? <laughs> 
Moving on to powder and I'm just going to press some of this matte blot powder on areas where I think I'm going to get a little bit oily so a little bit underneath my eyes, a little bit on my cheeks and my chin but not all over. I feel like the holidays is all about the red lip. Okay so this is the NARS Power Matte Lip Pigment and it's in the color Don't Stop. I would have to say this is my favorite matte lip product and also my favorite red lip color as well. Totally optional. One last and final thing. This is the Hard Candy Liquid Liner. The color is just so frosty and perfect for the holidays. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply it just right above my black liner and a little bit in the inner corners of my eyes. And there you go, KL's Friendsgiving slash baby shower look. Honestly, this is kind of like my go-to makeup look. I wear this almost all the time. The only thing that changes is my lip color, so... Yeah, <laughs> um, some awkward posing here. And if you like this video, be sure to like it down below. Hit that subscribe button to support me. But I'm here every Wednesdays and Fridays. And uh, I will chit chat with you guys later. Remember to rock on Slobies. Bye.